Member's statements. The member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I rise in this legislature to share a story from my community that is truly inspiring and highlights the resilience of the residents of Toronto Centre. Speaker, St. Jamestown is a neighbourhood in my community that has been ravaged by entirely preventable but catastrophic events. This past August, 1,500 residents were displaced from their homes after an electrical fire in a high-rise building. These residents continue to be displaced to this day. Over the past several weeks, a series of buildings in the same neighbourhood have had their electricity and their heat turned off because of dangerous conditions and the need for extensive electrical inspections. Reasonably, my constituents are angry with the level of neglect that they continue to witness from their landlords. It is difficult to understand why a building would not have regular electrical inspections or work orders that are filled in a timely manner. Last week, the neighbourhood had a community town hall, and it was at this meeting that the community voted to form the first-ever St. James Town Residents Association. Additionally, many of the, of the buildings are individually organizing into tenants associations so that they can better advocate for their rights. There is power when we come together, when we organize, and when we use our collective voice to fight for our community. I want to congratulate my constituents uh, for coming together, and I can't wait to see the positive impact that this has on our neighbourhood. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Don Valley North. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tomorrow, March the first, is the second Professional Engineer Day in, in the province. This day is greatly supported by the Ontario Society of the Professional Engineers. Professional engineers are trusted ethical leaders, builders, and doers. They are on the front line of innovation and create paradigm-changing solutions to complex problems that drive and improve our world. Provisional engineers are the economic engine of our province and help create jobs worthy and prosperity that can be enjoyable by all Ontarians. As you may know, before I become MPP, I worked as a design and develop electronic engineer for over 25 years in China, Germany, and in Canada. My wife, Chang Hong, is working as an engineer too. Furthermore, my son, Han, has continued our family's legacy, working as a professional engineer. Engineering is a great profession that improves the world around us. Engineering can also be a connection with your family members. I want to wish all of you a happy professional engineer days. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Thunder Bay, Atacokan. Thank you, Speaker. Children on the autism spectrum and their parents face a number of challenges in northwestern Ontario. One of my constituents, Alina Cameron, has a daughter. Her name is Fiona, and she is four. She told me that her daughter is nonverbal, severely autistic, and needs 24-hour care. She is currently receiving services through a pilot program in Thunder Bay, and Alina told me that her daughter has had amazing results, but this program is ending soon. Her daughter will have nowhere to go for services. This government's plan takes things from bad to worse. There simply aren't enough diagnosticians and service providers available in northwestern Ontario. That's the reality that the families face. There is nothing in this plan to address that. The plan ignores the travel costs that families in northwestern Ontario face. There are many families that have to travel great distances to access autism programs. For families, that means less money for autism services. What we need is a concrete plan to ensure that all children receive services based on need. What we need is a plan that addresses the regional disparities in the availability of services and service providers, a plan that addresses the thousands of dollars that families spend just to get to appointments. None of that is in this plan. 
I call on this government to go back and consult with parents and professionals. We need a plan that works. Member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I know a lot of people out there know that uh, animal welfare is very important to me. And almost every Thursday, I, I read out a petition that I've had signed from people all across this prom province about the need to enhance protections for our animals and our pets. That is why I introduced my first private member's bill, Protecting Our Pets Act 2018, to bring forward solutions from stakeholders on the important issue of ending animal cruelty and putting an end to puppy mills. This bill is up for second reading in this House next Thursday. And that's why I have been a constant supporter of our local, the Tobacco Humane Society in my riding. Last year, I included uh, animals from our local Humane Society in my calendar, which I sent out to households all across my riding. And I have to say that uh, adoption has been up in that Tobacco Humane Society in January. And during our legislative break, I was happy to attend the fourth annual Furball, a gala fundraiser in support of both the Etobicoke Humane Society and Rescue Foodie, which works to, uh, to supply pet food for animal rescues across Canada. It was a wonderful evening, complete with a red carpet entrance and a three-course meal. Speaker, just this week, we found out that their fundraising totals from the gala, they sold over 400 tickets and raised $40,000 to go towards those animals. Of that, $10,000 will go towards the hard-working volunteers at the Etobicoke Humane Society, which is great news to all the people who work there and all the pets in their care. I look forward to welcoming members from the Etobicoke Humane Society here next week for the second reading of the Protecting Our Pets Act. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. One of the most rewarding things about having the privilege to serve in this legislature is being able to recognize uh, people from my riding who do great things and make uh, the people of our riding proud. Today, I want to recognize two young women from my riding who are achieving great things in sport right here at the University of Toronto. In her first year of kinesiology at the University of Toronto and as the rookie starting goalie for the women's hockey team, Erica Fryer from Amherstburg was named Athlete of the Month this past January. Erica led her team to third place finish in the OUA uh, finals, and they are now battling the Western Mustangs in the semifinals. Last night, Erica recorded a shutout to propel her team to a one-game to nothing lead in the best of three series. Sure, Speaker, yeah. it's, uh, the team is headed up by former uh, Team Canada women's hockey team coach Vicky Sunahara. And uh, Coach Sunahara and I both encourage all members of this legislature to catch a game uh, this Friday just across the street at the, uh, at the varsity rink. Speaker, I also want to recognize Kylie Mass, uh, Massey from LaSalle. Kylie is an Olympic medal winner. She holds national records in the 50-meter and the 100-meter backstroke. She also broke a world record that stood for eight years in the 50-meter backstroke while at the 2017 World Championship in Budapest. Uh, Kylie's record with the University of Toronto Varsity Blues has been exceptional, and she finishes her OUA career with a fifth consecutive award as the OUA uh, female Swimmer of the Year. Speaker, congratulations to both Kylie and Erica. You're both inspirations to uh, young athletes like my son and daughter back home, and we are so proud of your achievements, not, not only through sport, but academically as well. Thank you well so done. much. Well Member statements. Member for Mississauga, Erin Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize the incredible and important work of Debra Technologies, which is an outstanding company respected for innovation and reliability in technology for empowering those on the front line in retail, healthcare, transportation, logistics, manufacturing, and many other industries to achieve the best performance. I had the pleasure of meeting with Zebra Technologies and their executives at their Mississauga head office Zebra Technologies offer a full variety of technologies designed for many industries and many businesses. During our meeting, we spoke spe specifically about Zebra Healthcare Technology Solutions. Zebra offers the la latest technologies and devices in healthcare to help provide better care in our facilities. Mr. Speaker, healthcare in Ontario is growing, and as the population continues to grow, we need the best innovative and developed technologies to provide the best care for our patients and caregivers. We need to encourage and incentive Canadian manufacturers to produce the highest level of quality in medical devices. 
Mr. Speaker, our government is creating an environment where businesses can grow. Our government has made it priority to cut red tape so that the business sector can grow and invest right here in Ontario. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you very much, Speaker. I first spoke with, I first spoke with Jordan early last year before I became MPP. He shared the story of how he and his wife, Christina, are raising their two lovely daughters, Rachel and Lily, who are both on the autism spectrum. He told me then the system needed substantially more funding because, for one, the needs for many families don't end when their child turns 18. Rachel, his eldest, has benefited from six years of three blocks of ABA programming for social skills development and emotional regulation. Rachel enjoyed it and found it very helpful. Jordan recently told me that he believes Rachel is on a path that will see her live an independent life. Lily, who will be turning four years old this spring, has been on a waiting list for the ABA class called Basic Communication. As of today, they have been waiting a little over a year. For Jordan and Christina, the thought that this government ordered the wait list for ABA Frozen is reprehensible. What gains could Lily have made by now had she begun therapy? Has this government held language back from her? Time to communicate with their precious daughter has been irrevocably lost. But what this government is undertaking is no solution at all. Simply eliminating the wait list and providing families a fraction of the funding they need helps nobody. Jordan and Christina do not want to see publicly funded therapies eliminated and thousands of therapists lost. I don't trust solution, this solution by the government that will see parents receive inadequate and unhelpful assistance. I trust Jordan and Christina, two amazing parents, who state the only path to truly help families is real and expanded funding, period. Thank you, Jordan and Christina, for sharing your story and for your tireless advocacy. Member Statements, the member for Simcoe North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This month, members of Simcoe North gathered to celebrate the 90th birthday of former city councillor, teacher, and NDP candidate, Fane Bullen. I was honoured to attend this celebration and spend time with Fane, his friends, and family. Originally from Granada, Fane has lived and served in the community of Aurelia for the majority of his life. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, the great teacher is not the man who supplies the most facts, but the one in whose presence we become different people. I believe this quote reflects the kind of teacher that Mr. Bullen was. A teacher at Park Street Collegiate Institute for several decades, many of his former students have told me that he inspired in them a love of learning and a desire to pursue studies further in history and politics. But Fane's passion for teaching did not end in the classroom. Fane is an avid cricket enthusiast and member of the Aurelia Cricket Club, taking any opportunity that presents itself to teach residents in the area about the history of the sport. Fane was also a founding member of the not-for-profit Paso for Paso, which provides much-needed medical aid as well as financial support to children and families in Guatemala. It also matches schools in the Aurelia area with schools in Guatemala to provide enriching educational exchanges. Fane has been a tireless champion in our communities, providing support to groups such as Helping Hands, as well as an advocate for affordable housing in Aurelia, helping to build the St. James Court Housing Project. Fane has been an exemplary community leader, and I would like to thank him for all the good he has done in our communities across my great riding. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much, Speaker. Last Saturday, I had the pleasure of taking part in the coldest night of the year walkathon organized by the Mosaic Interfaith Out of the Cold, which operates 16 emergency homeless shelters in southern York Region in partnership with various interfaith communities in Markham, Thornhill, Vaughan, and Richmond Hill. Speaker, homelessness affects about 12,000 Ontarians every night. These individuals are often facing tough circumstances at no fault of their own. The annual walkathon in Richmond Hill is a grassroots initiative to raise funds for those who are hungry, homeless, and hurting in the community. This weekend, I was joined by more than 130 participants, including many friends, family members, community leaders, and rep representatives from all levels of government. Speaker, I want to thank members of Team Parsa for joining me in helping raise funds and supporting this great, great initiative. Participants were able to join by taking part in either 2K, 
5K or 10-kilometer walk, followed by delicious food and live entertainment. I'm happy to, to report that this year's Richmond Hill Coldest Night of the Year Walkathon raised an astounding $43,000. I, sh I should point out that the initial goal was only 25,000 speakers, so this was an absolutely fantastic effort by everyone involved. I want to thank the participants, volunteers, organizers, in particular, Rihanna Somar for organizing this great event. The fundraising went really well, especially at this time of year, it's very important. I encourage everyone to make sure that they get involved in this great initiative in your local area. Thank you, Speaker. That concludes our member's statements for today. Reports by committees.